The United Arab Emirates is located on the southeastern tip of the Arabian Peninsula. The UAE is a federation of seven states, or emirates, formed in 1971. With borders to Saudi Arabia in the southwest and Oman in the east, four-fifths of its 83,600 square kilometers of land are desert. The biggest emirate and capital city of the UAE is Abu Dhabi on the Gulf Coast. But it's the second largest emirate and the UAE's biggest city, Dubai, that's become its most internationally well-known. And it's the stunning architecture of the city that is its most distinctive and recognizable feature. Buildings like the seven-star luxury Burj Al Arab Hotel and the amazing Burj Khalifa dominate the city. But what's remarkable when you see the towering skyline today is that if you had visited Dubai just 50 years ago, this city would have been almost totally unrecognizable. Before the 1950s, Dubai was a small but thriving port at the mouth of the Dubai Creek. Members of the Bani Yas tribe, led by the Maktoum family, had settled in the area in 1833, and what was once a tiny fishing village had grown into a centre of trade in the region. Traders from Iran and India brought their fish, spices, pearls and fabric by boat to sell at the market, or souk. The canal between the Deira and Bur Dubai sides of the city was full of trading barges and traditional boats, called dows, with their distinctive sails. But in the 1960s, everything started to change. Oil was discovered in the region. Today, it's impossible to think about Dubai without thinking about its extraordinary architecture. With more than 60 buildings over 200 metres high, skyscrapers dominate the heart of the city. Two of the most talked about structures are the Burj Al Arab and the Burj Khalifa. The Burj Khalifa was officially opened in January 2010 and at over 828 metres, it was the tallest building in the world. Remarkably, it only took 1,325 days to build the tower. At one point, there were over 12,000 people working on the tower at the same time, with workers from a hundred different countries. The building cost about $1.5 billion. There are thousands of people living and working on the 160 floors of the tower. Along with the hotel, there are 37 floors of offices, over a thousand apartments, and one of the biggest shopping malls in the world inside. On level 124, there's an observation deck with stunning views across the city and coastline. By Dubai standards, the Burj Al Arab Hotel is almost an historic building, and a short one too. The hotel opened in 1999 and stands at a mere 321 metres. Inside, it's like a vast palace where guests can enjoy themselves in seven-star luxury. But it's the distinctive shape of the building that has made it an architectural icon. The hotel stands on a man-made island 280 metres from the coast, and its design mirrors the shape of the sail of a traditional Arabian dhow. In this way, the contemporary building is linked with the city's heritage as a trading port, 
This connection between the past and present is something that can easily be lost in the forest of modern metal and glass high-rise structures. So much of Dubai is brand new that it sometimes feels that the traditions of the Emirati culture could get lost. But there are elements of traditional architecture that are not only being preserved, but becoming increasingly popular in modern designs. Eileen Orbashla is an architect who has worked extensively in the Middle East. I'm an architect by training, uh, but I specialised in historic buildings and the conservation of historic buildings and historic areas. Eileen has spent time looking at the historic buildings in Dubai. The main architectural tradition or the main house type um, of the sort of richer merchants was the coral built courtyard houses. Um, they were square or rectangular with a big courtyard in the middle that would provide shade um, during the hot summer days. And most notably, they had wind towers, which is a, an idea the Iranian merchants brought from Iran with them when they settled in Dubai. In the past, wind towers served a very practical purpose. They were an early form of air conditioning. The air captured by the tower circulated round the home, keeping it cool in summer, when the temperature can rise above 50 degrees. And today, wind towers are increasingly common, even in new buildings. But with modern technology, are they still needed? Um, not in the hugely practical sense, because buildings are sort of built and cooled in very different ways, using air conditioning and, and a lot more mechanical ways. Um, but it remains a very strong symbol of Dubai. So if people talk about traditional architecture in Dubai, the wind tower is, is that sort of known symbol. And uh, therefore, uh, many new buildings in Dubai have used the wind tower in one form or another in more in a sort of symbolic way, rather than an actual useful way. Dubai is a city of, of many faces, and there is pride in different forms of architecture. There is pride in the historic buildings that have survived and that have been restored. There, are pr there is pride when people choose to use the wind tower in their architecture, in their buildings, and, and they are sort of well talked about amongst locals. At the same time, they're, also, they're very proud of technological innovation and buildings that are breaking boundaries, that are the highest, the biggest, um, and gradually moving towards buildings that are highly energy efficient and things. So um, there is pride in all these different elements. So, like the sale of the Burj Al Arab, the architectural design of the wind tower is a strong symbol of both old and new Dubai. And it's this combination of old and new that makes the city such an interesting place for architecture. <laughs>